Okay class, today we are in section 2.2, solve one step equations. Section 2.2, solve one step equations. Before you solve equations using mental math. Now you will solve one step equations using algebra. Key vocabulary, inverse operations, equivalent equations, reciprocal, Inverse operations are two operations that undo each other, such as addition and subtraction. When you perform the same inverse operation on each side of an equation, you produce an equivalent equation. Equivalent equations are equations that have the same solutions. Key concept, addition property of equality. Words. Adding the same number to each side of an equation produces an equivalent equation. Algebra. If x minus a equals b, then x minus a plus a is equal to b plus a, or x is equal to b plus a. That's because the negative a and the positive a, they will cancel out. Subtraction property of equality. Words. Subtracting the same number from each side of an equation produces an equivalent equation. Algebra. If x plus a is equal, to, is equal to b, then x plus a minus a equals b minus a, or x is equal to b minus a. Once again, positive a and the negative a will cancel out. So for this side, you're left with just x. And on this side, you're left with b minus a. Example 1. Solve an equation using subtraction. Solve x plus 7 is equal to 4. Write the original equation. x plus 7 is equal to 4. Use subtraction. Use subtraction property of equality. Subtract 7 from each side. So I got x plus 7. So I'm going to say minus 7, minus 7. Because I want to get rid of 7 because I want the x to be by itself. So I end up with x equaling 4 minus 7, which is a negative 3. So the solution is a negative 3. Okay, now when solving these equations, do not try to use mental math. Do not try to use mental math. Use the steps they ask you to use because these steps are very important as you go along and work more complicated equations in algebra. And if you never learn the basic steps, you're going to be stuck. And some of you are going to start finding this out once we get to about section 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, 2.8. If you cannot do chapter 2, you will have trouble in algebra all year long. So follow the steps. Now, to give you another indication of that, I'm going to show you how to solve the same problem, but we're going to do it vertically. Here, it was solved horizontally. Remember, my goal is to get the x by itself. So just using common sense, not math, just using common sense. To get this x by itself, on this side is this equal sign. The 7 has to disappear. But what's the inverse of a positive 7? Negative 7. Negative 7. Now, what I do to one side of the equal sign, I must do to the other side of the equal sign. So now, what's a positive 7 when added to a negative 7? That's going to cancel out. So I'm left with just x is equal to what is 4 minus 7? Negative 3. Now, once again, these steps must be shown. This step must be shown. Example 2. Solve an equation using addition. Solve x minus 12 is equal to 3. Horizontal format. x minus 12 is equal to 3. They told us to write the original equation. Now we're going to add 12 to each side. Why? Because this is a negative 12 and I want to get this x by itself. To get the x by itself, I must get rid of this negative 12. So to do that, I'm going to add the inverse or the opposite of a negative 12. And that's going to be a positive 12 and a positive 12. So I should write down x minus 12, that's my original, plus 12 is equal to 3 plus 12. A negative 12, when added to a positive 12, that cancels out. I'm left with just x. And then 3 plus 12 is 15. Once again, the steps must be shown. The steps must be shown. Vertical format. X minus 12 is equal to 3. Same goal. I want to get this X by itself. 
That's a negative 12. So to get rid of it, I must add its inverse, a positive 12. Positive 12 on one side, positive 12 on the other side. A negative 12 and combined with a positive 12 will cancel out. And I'm left with x is equal to 3 plus 12, which is 15. Now, once again, to repeat, the reason you must learn these steps is because right now, solving an equation using addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, right now, it's, it's an entire lesson. In the future, it will boil down to one step. Once again, right now, it's an entire lesson. But in the future, it's going to boil down to one step. So you must have all the steps down. Multiplication and division equations. Multiplication and division are inverse operations. So the multiplication property of equality can be used to solve equations involving division. And the division property of equality can be used to solve equations involving multiplication. Key concept. Multiplication property of equality. Words. Multiplying each side of an equation by the same non-zero number produces an equ uh, equivalent equation. Algebra. If x divided by a equals b and a cannot equal zero, then a times x over a is equal to a times b. Or x is equal to a times b. Division property of equality words dividing each side of an equation by the same non-zero number produces an equivalent equation algebra if a times x equals b and a cannot equal zero then a times x divided by a is equal to b over a or x is equal to b divided by a all right now let's see what that means by working a few examples Example 3. Solve an equation using division. Solve negative 6 is equal to 48. Write the original equation. Negative 6 is equal to 48. Divide each side by negative 6. Negative 6x six, is equal to 48. I want to get the x by itself. So to get this x by itself, once again, not, even, not using math, I notice to get this x by itself, this negative 6 must disappear. Now it's read as negative 6 times x, negative 6 times x. What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. So therefore, I divide both sides by that same number, negative 6. Negative 6 here, negative 6 there. And once again, my problem should look just like this, step by step. So I got a negative 6 divided by a negative 6. That's going to equal to a positive 1. That is a positive 1. So in front of this x, that is a 1. 1x. One but we don't write it because how many x's do you see? All you see is 1x. So therefore, the 1 does not need to be written. It's implied. 48 divided by 6, excuse me, 48 divided by negative 6 is a negative 8. Example 4. Solve an equation using multiplication. Solve x divided by 4 is equal to 5. x divided by 4 is equal to 5. Write the original equation. x divided by 4 is equal to 5. Remember, my goal is to get this x by itself. So to get this x by itself, this 4 must disappear. You must find some way to get rid of it. All right, so now we said x divided by 4. What's the opposite of multiplication? Excuse me. What's the opposite of division? Multiplication. So therefore, we're going to multiply each side by 4. Multiply each side by 4. So 4 on this side. 4 on that side. Now, what is 4 divided by 4? That is 1. So I'm left with just 1x. 1x. Once again, that 1 is implied. What is 4 times 5? 4 times 5 is 20. So my final answer is x is equal to 20. Once again now, 4 divided by 4 is 1. So in front of that x is a 1, 1x. One but once again, we don't need to write the 1 because how many x's do you see? All you see is 1x and you write it. So in other words, you're writing x is equal to 20. So putting a 1 there is not needed, but it is implied. Using reciprocals, recall 
that the product of a number and its reciprocal is 1. You can isolate a variable with a fraction with a fractional coefficient by multiplying each side of the equation by the reciprocal of the fraction. All right, now before we go on, let's be sure we understand the reciprocal, how to use reciprocals uh, using actual examples. If I have 3 over 5 as a fraction, what's the reciprocal of 3 over 5? The reciprocal of 3 over 5 is 5 over 3. Now, if I were to multiply these, I would end up with 3 times 5 is 15, and 5 times 3 is 15. 15 divided by 15 is equal to 1. So in other words, taking a number and multiplying it by its reciprocal, I will always come out with 1. Now the other way to do this math is to simply say 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 3 once, 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 5 once. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1. Let's do one more. 6 over 2. Well, what's the reciprocal of 6 over 2? That's going to be 2 over 6. What's 6 times 2? 12. What's 2 times 6? 12. 12 divided by 12 is equal to 12 divided by 12 is equal to 1. And once again, 6 divided by 6, 1. 6 divided by 6, 1. 2 divided by 2, 1. And 2 divided by 2, 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Once again, take a number, multiply it by its reciprocal, and the answer is always 1. Okay, with that in mind, let's work out example 5. Solve an equation by multiplying by a reciprocal. Solve a negative 2 over 7x is equal to 4. Solution. The coefficient of x is a negative 2 over 7. The reciprocal of a negative 2 over 7 is a negative 7 over 2. So, we take our original equation. Everybody see that? Negative 2 over 7 times x is equal to 4. And we're going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So, here I multiply by a negative 7 over 2. And here I multiply by a negative 7 over 2. All right, now 7 times 2 is 14. 2 times 7 is 14, and 14 divided by 14 is simply 1. And don't forget, a negative times a negative is a positive, so it's a positive 1. Now here I got a negative 7 over 2 times 4. Here I have to recall how to multiply my fractions. See how here it is lined up, 7 on top, 2 on top, 2 on the bottom, 7 on the bottom, so that's lined up. Well, here it's got to be lined up. What's missing? We need to put a 1 up under that 4. All right, so what we're really looking at here is a negative 7 over 2 times 4 over 1. All right, so what is a negative 7 times 4? A negative 28. What's 2 times 1? 2. A negative 28 divided by 2 would give us a negative 14. They're not showing you this because they assume you already had a lesson on this. This is a good example of what used to be an entire lesson. It's now one step. So our final answer is going to be x is equal to a negative 14. Example 6. Write and solve an equation. Olympics. In the 2004 Olympics, Sean Crawford won the 200 meter dash. His winning time was 19.79 seconds. Find his average speed to the nearest tenth of a meter per second. Solution. Let R represent Crawford's speed in meters per second. Write a verbal model, then write and solve an equation. Okay, to work with our verbal model, we're going to use the equation distance equals rate times time. Distance equals rate times time. What was the distance? 200. What was the rate? We don't know. What was the time? 19.79 seconds. So what's our equation? 200 is equal to 19.79 times r. We want to get the r by itself. So we divide both sides by 19.79. Here and here. When we get through dividing, this cancels out. And r is equal to 10.1. 
19.79 divided by 19.79 is 1. 